How many people believe before you heard me say racism doesn't exist and you still may believe it? How many of you believe racism exists at one point in time? Amazing. So the reason I asked this is uh, yesterday, uh, Francisco sent me this uh, video of this ex uh, KGB from the Soviet. And he grew up, his father was a KG, what, what's a, a spy? Yeah. Equivalent of the CIA or something, yeah. Oh, okay. And so his father grew up as one, so he became one as well. And it was so interesting. It was an hour long video, so I was stuck on the freeway. That's the only time in my life I've been happy that there was heavy traffic. Cause it gave me a chance to hear the whole thing, right? And this guy, he, um, they transferred him over to India at one time when he was very young, so he could spy on them as well. But he, while there, he began to like the Indian people because they were nice people. He realized that they were not what he had been told that they were growing up, right? And so he, it, it became hard for him to spy on them. So what he did was he defected to uh, Canada, I believe. And the way he did that was, at that time, there were white hippies over in India. And so he dressed up like a hippie. He put on a white wig. He, he pretended he was smoking pot and doing all that. And he was able to get out of the country that way. And so he was telling how, oh, and I wrote down a few things up here. He, he talked about how when they turned, I guess, Russia into a communist society, because I guess at one time it used to be a Christian, decent society, that they would brainwash the people. Number one, they would have the people fighting amongst one another. They would make up uh, some type of problem. It wouldn't even be a real problem at all. And then they would go into the media and others start saying that this was a problem. And they would say it over and over again until the people started to believe it. And so the people would fight one another over something that didn't exist at all. It was just made up because they wanted to turn Russia into a socialist society. And, um, and he talked about how they would invite people from different countries, Africa, uh, the government, you know, dictionaries and actors and movie stars and things. From, they invite them from America to the Soviet because uh, at the time the Soviet Union had, a, I guess they may still have it, but they had a death camp and, and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so they would invite the Americans over <clears throat> and the Africans over so that they could come back over here and give a false report about Russia to make Russia sound good as though nothing was going on, all was well, right? And he said that when the Americans would come, they would take the Americans to the reporters and the politicians, they would take them to a fake school, or well, a nice school, where this, the, the, the KGB children went. And it was a nice school, right? But they would also show them a, a different kind of school where, uh, where the parents were enslaved and camped, and the kids was going to that school, but it was a horrible school to attend, but they would dress up the school and make it look like it was a decent school. And that's why they showed them the decent school first, and then they put a fake school there. And he said that um, one of his job was when the Americans were to, were to go there, his job was to get them drunk and high. And so the moment he got them off the plane, he would, off, he would take them to this amazing hotel, and he would say, hey, let's make a toast. And he would start getting them drunk right away. And the whole time that they were there, they kept them drunk. And he showed pictures of the dinners and things they would hold. They had bottles of whiskey and wine, and they were always making toast so that they keep the reporters and everybody drunk. And, uh, 
But he would drink a little bit or none at all. But they were so drunk they didn't know it. And then the, the Russian had given him a pill so that he would not get drunk and prevented him from getting drunk. And so the next morning, when they would meet again about Russia, he would tell, he would pretend that they already had a conversation, they had started a previous conversation about a certain issue, and that the Americans were so drunk, they thought they had had the conversation too. And so they would add on to the conversation that never happened. Isn't that amazing? And then they had some uh, professors from this country and other countries that would go there, and they would show them material about Russia, books on Russia and things like that, to professors. And he said that they would read the books and they would be so happy and excited. They love Russia, right? But every word in the book was a lie. And the material that they read, all lies. None of it was true. And so some of the experts would come back here and they would go on TV as experts of Russia. They would be telling America about Russia. And, but everything they would tell America about Russia was lies because they wrote fake books to deceive them so that the world would not know what Russia was doing, uh, a communist society, right? And that the experts over here would get paid, they would be on TV show, pushing Russia, and over there they would be laughing at the experts. Like, what useful idiots, right? Isn't that amazing? And then the American people would believe the experts. I told y'all the only real experts are my experts. <laughs> um, <clears throat> they invited Kennedy over when he was president, and they, they took him to a fake wedding. And they did that because Kennedy had a big ego. In America, they treated him like a king, right? And so they needed to use him. And so they invited Kennedy to a wedding, which was all set up. It wasn't even weird. And they made him feel so good. And uh, they gave him wine and stuff. And Kennedy came back to America, really promoted Russia too. All lies, none of it was true, that they believe it. And so uh, in the meantime, the people in Russia was fighting one another over non-issues. And what the government would do in Russia, it would create false emergencies. And the re like we have the Chinese virus now, right? And the reason they created false emergency because they wanted to see the number of people who would overreact to it, that were afraid. And when they saw that the people were afraid, they would refuse to end the emergency. They would keep it going and keep it going until they could control everybody. And, uh, and the ones that they were able to control were the ones who were afraid who had fear, and they end up dividing the, the, the fearful people from the non-fearful people. Isn't it like what's happening here now? Yeah. This whole Chinese thing, the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated. And it was all lies. They did nothing but lie the whole time. The media lied for them. And they asked, well, why, does, why did the media lie? And he's like, I don't, I don't. He said he think it was for ego reasons. They loved being seen on TV. They felt important. Some of them were professors and things like that. And it was greed because a lot of them got a lot of money. And once they became media reporters, they knew what the real truth was, but they were afraid to say it because they would lose their jobs. So they would have to promote the lie in the media. And the people just suck it up. And, I mean, and that's how, oh, and the professors, they would bring some of the professors from over here to there, and they were really, and they said it was some of the dumbest professors they ever seen from America. <laughs> and he said that he noticed that the dumb professors, the one on, uh, you know, they're not the A student, but whatever, right? When they leave college, they go work for the government. Nearly all of them work for the government because it's a job that you can have for the rest of your life, right? And then that they would be used in the government, like to help promote the vaccine for us, per se, right? They are, they are spying on the regular folks and, and things like that because they didn't want to lose their job. They were afraid and they were greedy. And the media were doing the same thing. Isn't that like amazing? And so I, I was thinking about, oh, something else they said. 
Oh, they got rid of Christianity over there, too. They attacked Christian as something bad. And they, they would get the media to promote it as bad until the people started hating Christianity and Christians. And so none of the things that they were doing was real. It was all made up. And so when the, the politicians and entertainers would come, they never showed them the bad part of, of Russia. They never saw it. They always presented the good because they needed them to come back to this country and other countries to say that Russia was good and not that it was a death camp, it imprisoned people, taking the rights away from them. And the exact same thing is happening here. And it's so easy to brainwash people like that. They hear it over and over, they start believing it, and it's not real. And he said that the exact, exactly what happened in, in Russia is happening here word for word, action for action. The results are the same, the reactions are the same, the media is being paid off, and the politicians are being paid off. And some of them, they know better, but they won't, they won't tell the public because of fear of losing their jobs. Isn't that something? And they pay them a lot of money so they can become greedy. And, and, and it's never enough money. They want more and more so they become experts and they become book writers and they promote their books and because enough money is never enough. And he said that uh, in Russia, they used the homosexuals and the lesbians and the perverted people to bring the country down, to demoralize the country. And once they got what they want, they killed the homosexuals. They get rid of them. Now, they don't really like them, right? But they used them to demoralize the country. And he said that it took about 20 years or so in the universities to brainwash the people and demoralize them and, and re-educate them in a way that they don't know that they're being re-educated. And then once you spend 20 years on that generation, then they're going to teach the same thing to their children. And that children, their children will be demoralized and brainwashed and dumbed down as well. And he, he talked about how that happened to the young here in this country. If you look at them, they, still, they have no morals at all. And most of them don't even know that they're immoral. They have presented it in the colleges and things like that as moral values, and they are not moral values. And so it caused, and he went on and on, and I'm going to have Frank and tell you on the name of the, uh, the video. So it caused me to think about racism, right? When I was growing up, I never heard the word racism at all. It was good versus evil. They knew that there were decent people in all races of folks, and there were bad people. And so they told us we should treat people the way we would like to be treated. But when, I, when the Civil Rights Movement started, and I moved to the city, that's when I really started hearing the word racism over and over. If you had to go to the toilet, it's a racist thing. <laughs> you hear it with everything. You had a bad, bad hair day, it's racism. And they've been pushing it and pushing it to the point they use it now like water. And they're getting away with it. And the reality that there is no such thing as racism. It never exists. Well, because the people heard it over and over and over and over again, and it was validated by their parents and things like that, the people started believing it. And now there's a separation between the races over nothing, over a word that doesn't exist. Isn't that amazing? And it happened like that with a lot of things. We've been lied to. And I'm like, wow, this is so interesting. It is, I didn't realize that you could really brainwash people like that. He said that even in the media today in America, everything you hear is a lie. Everything you hear. None of it is true. And not only from the liberal media, from, but the conservative media too. They're all lying to you. They are not telling you the real, real truth of what's really going on because they're getting paid. They live in fine homes, they have nice cars and everything, and they love controlling the people for their own personal gain. That's shocking to me. And we could walk around not knowing that we're brainwashed. And, I, and I, so I wonder, how come, how come we don't know that we're brainwashed? Look like a brainwashed person would know that he's brainwashed. 
I would think, but they don't. And I remember when I, again, I didn't believe in this race. I never heard of it growing up in Alabama. Even when they talked about the KKK, they still didn't, I still didn't hear the word racism. It was just a, some white men that wore robes and they were mad about whatever they were mad about. Um, and so when I moved here, I started hearing about racism from Louis Farrakhan and Jesse Jackson and others. And then I started to believe it. And once I believed it, it had me. And so every time I saw a white person, especially if they disagreed with me, it was race. They are doing it because they're, I'm black, right? And so I wondered, how did I become unbrainwashed? And I realized the way I became unbrainwashed is when God took the anger away from me. Because every angry person is brainwashed and don't know it. It's easy to feed an angry person a lie. And so I remember when he woke me up, I saw that, wow, it's not about race, it's about character. Black people are mad about nothing, you know? It's about values, it has nothing to do with race. And from that day forward, I've just been growing in the light, so it's hard to brainwash you once you wake up. But every angry person is brainwashed. They're living in darkness and cannot see. Isn't that amazing? There's this fat, real fat black woman, like fat from head to toe. Not like just belly fat, but fat fat. And she is evil and angry. And she was doing an interview on TV, and she said something like, we're going to take out all these white, did she say MFers or something? Did she say that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They eat up all the food. She said MF, right? Yeah. She said, uh, in response to a question about what to do about white and racism, yeah. to summarize, she said, we got to take these, I want to say we want to take these MFers out, but we can't say that. Yeah. And there is no, pro <laughs> there is no protest about it. Nobody demanding that she be thrown out of, as a so-called professor. None of that. And so the white people are afraid of a word that doesn't exist. They don't want to be called racist, and so they're running from a word that doesn't even exist. Can you get in the brain watching that? It's, uh, so you got to overcome your anger. Then you start to see. And it'll be hard for anyone to deceive you. And if they do deceive you, it'll only be for a little bit. It won't last. You'll be able to see through that eventually. But all human beings, that's why you're afraid. That's why you have, you're afraid, and they use your fear to control you. I'm going to take away your house. I'm going to take away your job. I'm going to take away your car. I'm going to take away something, right? Uh, oh, and then he mentioned how if that doesn't work, if they couldn't, the, the game that they played in Russia, if they couldn't take away all your stuff, because some people that were brave, the citizens, they were not afraid, right? There's always that in there, too. He said what they would do is make up lies about your reputation. They would try to destroy your reputation. But if that wasn't important to you, then they couldn't do anything to you. They could not hurt you, except take you to a camp somewhere and kill you. Yeah. Isn't that like an amazing story? Where is that? What's the name of that person? His name is Yuri Bezbenov. And uh, he was. Oh, you guys know him? Yes. He was a KGB agent, and um, he worked around the world uh, deceiving people. And one thing that he said was um, that we're in absolute war with the United States. Oh, yeah. And um, he referenced Sun Yu, Sun Tzu, and he said that uh, the greatest victory in war is to never fight to never have a physical battle. So, that's, so Russia has been having a psychological battle on the United States for the last uh, 50 years, and they're in the third or fourth generation of people that are brainwashed and programmed to, uh, to destroy themselves. And even if you take these people to Russia and show them, we've been brainwashing you, uh, this stuff here in Russia is, 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 uh, 
it's terrible here and we kill people, that those people would not believe it. They will not believe it. Yeah, think he said, lying. even if we took some Americans over to Russia and we <clears throat> tell them, hey, we've been deceiving you, it's not true. It's all lies. He said that even if they showed the people the death camps, even if they beat the folk, they still wouldn't believe that they're brainwashed. Isn't that amazing? Brainwashing run deep. It's a spiritual thing. And it comes from the parent. Yeah. It first starts, the brainwashing starts with the mother being impatient with the, with the, with the child. And, and it grows from that. Amazing. And that's how they started with the blacks over here. They start, once the, the black gator lies over to the so-called civil rights leaders and others, they start feeding them then. They want to be their leaders, so they start telling them lies and, and showing bad movies and all that kind of stuff. And it's going on even today. And it's like amazing to me. And then I wonder if a brainwashed, brainwashed person heard this same video, would they believe him? It was so clear and it was so precise. And he said that he warned the American people what happened so that you could start speaking up. You got to speak up. And he said he's warning you because he love America and that this is the last country for freedom. Once they take your freedom away here, it's over. There's no way else to go in the world. That's my blowing. And also that um, really all you got to do is start speaking up and refuse to back down. There's nothing they can do. But if they can put fear in you, they can shut you down, speaking up or standing up, that's it. It's over. And they're taking away our freedom to speak up and everything right now. Amazing.